Okay, so I thought to begin at the beginning, how involved were you in the casting process and how much do I have to thank you for? Um, but do you remember working with involved, Chris? Or? Yeah, I, 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 was, I was involved, not to the extent that I was sitting in, in on auditions, but they were keeping me really fully informed. As you know, we found Rupert and Emma and they were perfect and that was a done deal and we still couldn't find you. Will you say how you were found? Well, it, it was just, it was amazing, really. It's, it was a bizarre kind of moment. I'm, originally, what had happened was that David Heyman, the producer, yeah, yeah um, knew my dad because my dad had been a literary agent. Yeah. Um, and my dad had worked with David's mum. And so David sort of asked my dad if I would audition. And mm -hmm. the original deal was that we'd heard was going to be to do six films and it was going to be done in America and it was all sort of, you know... It was going to be done in America? No one ever told me that. Well, well, you know, well, thank, well obviously, maybe that's why it changed, because you probably put your foot down at some point or they just went, Joe won't agree to that. Um, yeah, they, which know is, me, they know me which, well. <laughs> which was good, to be honest. That would have been... That would have not been good. But um, I'm not somebody who particularly believes in fate and destiny and all those things, but my parents do. And so the final straw was the fact that I was, I went to the theatre to see a production of Stones in His Pockets and David Heyman and Steve Clovis, who adapted all but one of the books, um, happened to be sitting in the row in front. You and, believe it. And I was, I was sat there for the whole time thinking, why is that man keep Staring at me, at this at is me. very creepy. It was very <laughs> I need, creepy. I need to phone someone. It was very odd. And, my, and I remember at the interval, my mum and my dad both looking kind of quite intense about something. Mm -hmm. But you know when, as a kid, you're, you, you're aware that you're being purposely kept out of the loop, yeah. you know, for your own good kind of thing. And uh, I remember we went up the stairs and out of the theatre and then sort of hid behind a pillar. I seem to remember that it's some absurd notion that David Amos and Steve Close were going to chase yeah. after us, you know, <laughs> grab us. Uh, yeah, like and make you be a child actor. <laughs> um, and and um, then there was some debate as to whether we would go back in for the second half, but I was really, really enjoying the bad. play. Yeah, and so we went back in, and then the next day they kind of, my mum and dad sort of went, oh, well, maybe, maybe it is the gods sort of trying to tell us something, you know. But there were a lot of mm. strange coincidences. Mm, and were. then they called me and said, we think we found him. And then the first time I ever saw you was on screen in my sitting room at home. Really? They, yeah, they sent me a video of you. And the, the curious thing is, and I'm like, I don't believe in fate and destiny. I Which is you interesting, make, I think it comes you, up so much. Yeah, absolutely. I think you make yeah. your own. Yeah. But um, so I saw you on um, that audition tape and it was, I, had, I don't think I've ever really told you that I found incredibly moving. Oh, thank you so and, much. And Cheers. almost, I mean, it was incredibly moving. At that point, I didn't have a son. Oh, right. Yeah. So, and I phoned David up and I said, he's, um, he, he's, he's great, he's fantastic. And I, rem I did say to David, it was like watching a son, my son on screen. Because after all, Harry felt like, feels like this ghostly yeah. son that I've had in my life. 